Chapter 6, Selection and Use of Pesticide Application Equipment Choosing and using pesticide application equipment correctly is critical for using pesticides safely and effectively. This presentation will give you tips on what equipment to use in various situations, how to clean and calibrate it, and how to measure pesticides so you get the right rate in the tank. The equipment you use to apply a pesticide must be appropriate for the pesticide product and the location and conditions of the treatment area. Select the right pesticide equipment for each job. Check the label for information on which equipment is appropriate for the product you are using. Consider the size and the location of the application area. When purchasing equipment, choose sprayers that are easy to maintain and durable. Caps on spray tanks should close and seal well. Hoses and fittings should resist leaks and drips. Equipment for herbicide application should only be used for weed killing application. Herbicide residues remaining in tanks, hoppers, hoses, or nozzles may injure desired plants when you use the same equipment to apply insecticide or fungicide to foliage. The ash tree leaves shown here show herbicide damage to leaves. Ready-to-use pesticides come with their own application equipment. They can be convenient for very small jobs. Aerosol sprays have limited uses in the landscape, sometimes used for insect control on patio plants or for ants in cracks and crevices. They have a high potential for drift. Trigger pump sprayers are useful for applying insecticides or fungicides such as insecticidal soaps or neem oils to single small plants or for spot treatments. Non-selective herbicides also come in squirt bottles. You don't have to mix the herbicide or pesticide up and you can keep the ready to use in your truck for small jobs. Hose end sprayers attached to the garden hose. They are easy to use but have some drawbacks. They are difficult to calibrate and the delivery might not give the desired rate of application depending on the water pressure. Also, there is a risk that uneven water pressure may move the pesticide back into the water supply. Install a backflow prevention device on the tap to prevent contamination of the water supply. The most common types of sprayers used in landscape situations are compressed air sprayers or backpack sprayers. These sprayers are used to apply liquid pesticides that have been mixed up from concentrates. Know the parts of your sprayer. Compressed air sprayers and backpack sprayers have essentially the same parts. Each has a tank for mixing and holding the diluted pesticide mixture. Each also has a pump or a pump lever to create pressure to move the liquid. In the compressed air sprayer, the pump is at the top and you push it down to create pressure. On the backpack sprayer, the pump is at your waist and you pump it as you walk along to create pressure. The hose moves the liquid from the tank to the wand, which you use to apply the pesticide. The wand has a control valve to release the pesticide, and at the end of the wand, there is a nozzle that produces small droplets in a specific pattern. Nozzles are the most important part of the sprayer because they control the application rate, droplet size, and spray patterns. Flat fan spray nozzles are used to apply herbicides. The pesticide comes out in the shape of a fan with more droplets in the center. Cone nozzles are used for insecticide and fungicide treatments. They produce a spray in either a hollow cone or solid cone pattern. This allows the pesticide to get into dense foliage. Some sprayers come with adjustable nozzles that control droplet size and spray pattern from a wide cone pattern to a solid stream. Clean your backpack sprayer or compressed sprayer daily after use. Don't keep pesticide mixtures in the sprayer overnight. 
Be sure you've applied all the pesticide in the tank to a labeled site before you start cleaning. Then, partially fill the sprayer with clean water and apply it to a site that's allowed on the product label until the tank is empty. Keeping your gloves on, remove the nozzles and rinse them along with the filter screens. If particles are stuck in nozzles, dislodge them with a wooden toothpick. Don't use metal tools. They can damage nozzles. Granule pesticides are applied with spreaders. Two types of spreaders are drop spreaders and rotary or broadcast spreaders. Drop spreaders are best because they give the most accurate application. Rotary spreaders tend to scatter granules widely, sometimes into areas that shouldn't be treated. To calibrate granule spreaders, check the pesticide label. The label will tell you what setting to use depending on the brand of your spreader. Bait stations are used for certain types of pesticides to keep the toxic substances away from pets, people, and wildlife. Baits combine an attractive food with pesticide so the pest comes directly into the station to feed. Baits used for rats, mice, and ground squirrels are safest when used in bait stations or bait boxes. Check bait stations regularly for dead animals. Also, keep baits fresh. Ant baits are often applied in refillable bait dispensers, or you can purchase ready-to-use ant stakes or bait stations. Before you mix up a pesticide, read the label, Put on the suggested personal protective equipment and gather everything you need for the application. Choose a safe mixing location. Choose a spot that can easily be cleaned up in case of a spill and one that is away from drains or waterways. You must also be prepared to calibrate your equipment. Calibration means checking and adjusting your pesticide application equipment to make sure you're applying the correct amount of pesticide. How do you determine how much pesticide you will need to put in the tank? First, check the label for the rate. For pesticides to be spread to an area such as a lawn, the rate will be a certain amount of pesticide for an area in square feet. For instance, on this label, 2.5 fluid ounces should be applied in a gallon of water for each 400 square feet. To find out how much you will need to apply, you will need to measure your treated area. Use the rate on the label and the measurement of the area to be treated to calculate how much pesticide to put in the tank. Here is an example for a lawn that is 20 feet by 10 feet. The area in square feet, therefore, is 20 times 10, which is 200 square feet. Now remember that the rate on the label was 2.5 ounces in a gallon of water for 400 square feet. Since your area is half that much, you will need to put in half the amount of herbicide, or 1.25 ounces, in one half the amount of water, or one half gallon, in your spray tank. You must spray it evenly over the area so the whole area is covered with the same amount of material. For spot treatments, or for treatment of individual shrubs or trees, the label will give you an amount of pesticide to mix in a gallon of water. On the label shown here, three to four tablespoons per gallon is the rate. You will need to estimate how many gallons of water you will need to cover your tree or shrub, and then add the right amount of pesticide. You should fill your tank with a known amount of clean water, before applying the pesticide and see how much of it will be required to cover your tree or shrub. Generally about two gallons will cover a large tree. You need to purchase the correct measuring tools for your applications. Some pesticide labels will give measurements in tablespoons or teaspoons. Others will give measurements in fluid ounces. 
Others require measuring devices labeled in cups, pints, gallons, or liters. Purchase measuring tools that have the correct measuring units. If your label requires measuring with tablespoons, a liquid measure with fluid ounces won't work. Dry pesticides often must be weighed. All pesticide measuring tools should be labeled for pesticide use only to prevent mix-up with household cooking tools. When you are ready to mix up a liquid pesticide, start by adding some of the water first. Measure carefully. Always keep a space called an air gap between the hose and your tank so the pesticide mixture can't accidentally be siphoned into the water supply. After part of the water has been put into the tank, Carefully measure the required amount of pesticide and pour it into the tank. Then add the remaining required amount of water. If you empty the pesticide container, this is the time to do your triple rinsing. Use the remaining required amount of water to rinse the container three times, pouring the rinse aid into the sprayer. You should now be ready to apply pesticides safely and effectively. Remember these five elements. They are necessary for a successful pesticide application. Number one, correct application equipment and personal protective equipment. Correct pesticide and application rate. Correct type of coverage. Spot for small areas, broadcast for larger areas such as lawns. The pests you are trying to control must be correctly identified and at a life stage that can be controlled with the pesticide you're applying. You must have checked your site thoroughly to make sure that the pesticide can be applied without causing harm to people, plants, wildlife, or the environment. This is the end of the presentation for Chapter 6, Selection and Use of Application Equipment. It is also the end of the presentations to prepare for the California Maintenance Gardener Pesticide Applicator exam. After reviewing the sample test questions and the exercises in the study guide and workbook, you should be ready for the exam. Consult the webpage www.ipm.ucdavis.edu category Q for more information about study materials.